Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Plank Co podcast. I'm Max, and today's guest is the oldest, but yet by far the fittest mm-hmm. vegan I have ever met. Lifelong vegan since 1956. Mm-hmm. Professional athlete still today, and an ambassador for Veganuary. Find him on Facebook at John Matchin, aka Mega Vegan. Great nickname. John, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Max. So we're recording in the gym where John trains in Macclesfield, Anytime Fitness. So if you are in Manchester area, do check it out. Great place. You seem to be here a lot. Mm. Every yeah, morning. Well, there's an Anytime Fitness in Manchester. Oh, really? Yeah, there's one in Bramall, there's one in Ermston, one in Piccadilly. They're all over the place. Ah, right? All over the UK yeah. then. Do, most of my followers are in the Middle East though, so a lot of people will be watching this from Dubai. They're, they're, they're international. Oh, okay. So they've got something like 6,000 gyms worldwide. Wow, that is a, that's yeah, a lot. You've got no excuse. Well, yeah, I mean, looking at you, you've got no excuse, that's for <laughs> sure. Anyway, anyway. So before this, actually, I challenged you to an arm wrestle, which was very brave of me, and you declined <laughs> that, and I wanted to get into why you declined it. Well, well is this the old macho thing? Isn't exactly, it? I mean, yeah. I'm, just, I'm not really into that anymore. Used to be, I suppose everybody used to be. But the other thing is, I, I remember hearing the nurse say that the most common form of uh, broken arm in young men is arm rest, oh, cause of broken arms. Really? Arm okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's the torsion, twisting and pressure on the humerus comes in from the wrong direction in time. It just snaps in two. Well, I'm glad you saved me from that then. Yeah. And I'm then you did offer to challenge me to pull-ups, but there was no way I was getting involved <laughs> with that because I injured myself actually playing paddle tennis, even though that's a pathetic excuse for it. Yeah. But you saved me from an embarrassing defeat. I, I do a lot of pull-ups, Max. Yeah. Um, I do pull-ups every day. Right. Pull-ups, chin-ups. And um, I've been doing them for decades. All right. I do the dead hang pull up and generally, the pull-up bar in every gym is pretty free. It's hardly ever used. It gathers dust. Yeah, true. And nobody else does them. Yeah. And it's supposed to be a great workout as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you see, it's body weight, isn't it? Yeah. So we're all saying you can bench press 200 kilos, but what's your body weight? Yeah. Uh, if you, your body weight's 150 kilos, it's just over your body weight. Um, pull-ups are a test of body weight and strength related to the two. So you can add as much body weight as you want, but if you can't pull it up, you're not functionally strong. Right, okay. So we'll get into the strength aspect and all of the workout part in a little bit, mm. but I want to get into the man behind the, under the bandana. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty cool bandana. It's a desert scarf. Is it, okay. Technically, desert, yes. Desert scarf, we're in Macclesfield. <laughs> <laughs> Come to I Dubai st- and bring you... St- we used to go to Egypt a lot. Ah, okay. Um, we used to spend winter in Egypt. And these were the, the thing there, and I yeah. just brought it back with me. Quite it's nice, it's, nice. It's, it's, people don't recognise me without it now. Really? So I've got to wear it, yeah. <laughs> You've got, like, trees growing underneath it. It's all the vegan food. <laughs> it's an affectation. Yeah. But people recognise it. Yeah, so definitely. It's very snazzy. Yeah. You should have your own brand of them or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty so, good in winter. It keeps your ears warm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, like we said, you were born in 1956. In the 60s, was it even called being vegan? Was it even called being plant-based? Nobody knew what vegan meant Yeah, in, in those days. You, you could go into a restaurant. We didn't eat out very much in the 60s or 70s or 80s or 90s. Uh, it's quite a recent trend yeah. in Britain, eating out. Um, you used to eat out on holidays. But this thing of going out for a meal every week or several times a week just didn't happen. And delivering food as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you went into a restaurant and said to the waiter, I'm vegan... 
I think, well, you're from another planet, are you? From the planet Vega? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you would explain what vegan is, and they say, well, you can do fish, though, can't you? And yeah, say, oh, no. but we still get that today. Yeah, you still get it. If you say vegetarian, yeah. but I don't have dairy, they understood then, but then there was nothing on the menu that you could have. Maybe chips and peas, and that was about it. But then you had to ask, what, what are you cooking the chips in? Yeah. Uh, we, 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 no, no, I'll go and ask the chef. And it's such a mither. Do yeah. you understand the word mither? That's no, local. that's an old-fashioned word. <laughs> it's colloquialism. It's, uh, it's a local word for fuss and ah, bother. Okay. Yeah. A load of mither. Such a mither. You just didn't eat out. Yeah. Um, you went out for a drink and somebody said, we want some pork scratchings or beef and onion flavoured crisps. She said, no, I'm vegan. Yeah. What does that mean? Oh, here we go again. Yeah. I've got to explain it all. Ooh, that must be difficult. Yeah. That was, that was, the, that was the, when, when you explained what vegan meant, I, particularly from women, I used to get, well, that must be difficult. And I'm thinking, what, what's difficult about it? It's, it's easy compared with your diet. We well, have to buy all these cuts of meat, trim them, prepare them, cook them for hours. Yeah. I just pick up a bloody banana and eat it, and there's no washing up, there's no preparation. And you don't have to worry about salmonella, you don't have Absolutely. to worry about cooking it right. Yeah. It, it is a lot easier, and yeah. you just remove four dead animals from your diet, and yeah. you, you're set. And it's cheaper. It is, yeah. <laughs> that is a big myth around veganism, is that it's expensive. I don't know where this seems the to come from. The organic thing would be, if you're going for organic. Organic yeah. food, but there again, you get organic meat. Exactly, which yeah, grass is fed. also and, expensive. Yeah. Um, so it's as, as my father would say, it's as broad as it is long. If you go organic, it's going to be expensive. Yeah. But otherwise, it isn't. It is very, very inexpensive. Um, I, I went for, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I went for about seven years as a, what they call a frugivore. So, well, they also call it raw vegan, but frugivore or fruitarian right. sounds better. Raw vegan sounds awful, doesn't it? It and does. It, people sort of think, well, you're eating all kinds of food, but you're eating them raw, or you should be cooking. No, you just eat the food which you can eat raw. Right. And I love that diet. Seven years, very inexpensive. Um, the only thing was, you're eating all the time, and you don't put any, on any weight at all. Okay. There was a story of, uh, I think it was the Second or First World War, I think it was Second World War, where the farmers, the pig farmers in Britain, rather than feeding the pigs cooked potatoes, fed them raw potatoes to save energy, because they're in power cuts and all that. Makes sense. And they stopped putting weight on. They were eating the same amount of potatoes, but they were eating them raw. Right. And they didn't put weight on. Cook the potatoes, feed them to the pigs, same weight, and they, get, they fatten up. What was anyway, putting on the weight? Anyway, there's a moral there somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, raw food, don't put weight on. I thought it was don't eat pigs. But the, the moral is always don't eat pigs because they're fantastic. <laughs> they animals. are, yeah. Very intelligent. They're but you didn't get into it for them because it was cheap or you didn't get into it because it was healthy initially, did you? No, instinctively. I, I, if you believe in reincarnation, I was a vegan in a previous life. Okay. Because I came into this world and I saw the things my parents were eating. I was disgusted. I was repelled, repulsed. Um, I just couldn't stay in the same room as the smell of meat. Right. Cheese, I mean, most people's favorite food. Cheese, it smells like old socks. It does, yeah. I used to love cheese. I st wow. To this day, I still love the taste well, of cheese. Th this is the thing. This is why for the first 50 years of my life or more, I thought I'm on the wrong planet here. Yeah. I don't like any of this stuff that people find really delicious and his favorite food and stuff like that. I'm, it makes me sick just to think of eating it. Right. So that's how it started out. So your parents weren't vegan? No, no, wow. no, 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 no. no. Uh, they smoke 40 to 60 cigarettes a day as well. <laughs> so you, you, <laughs> but they you just really, gave yeah. up. They, they, they realized that they weren't going to make me eat meat right. and dairy, eat what I didn't want to eat. I said, you put that anywhere near me, you put it in my mouth, I will be sick, I'll be physically sick. I know I will. It's, ugh. Anyway. Uh, about the age of five, the doctor said, well, you've got to start eating right because you won't live to see 10 years old. And I, th 
I, I suppose a five-year-old brain doesn't care. I thought, well, I'm, I'd rather die than eat that. So they literally would rather wow. die than put that in my mouth, chew it and swallow it. An activist from that young age, eh? But it, it made me research stuff. Um, him telling me that, I thought, well, OK, I'm, I'm going to research this. Because to me, eating meat and dairy isn't natural. Never has been. I, I don't mean subjectively, I mean objectively. I don't think it's natural for the human race. We haven't got talons, we haven't got claws, we haven't got a beak, we haven't got the fangs that carnivores, natural carnivores, have got. We haven't got anything like that. Yeah. People, <laughs> we sit, we get people saying, well, it's natural for us to eat meat. I said, well, you, you eat beef? Yeah. I said, well, there's a cow over there, go and, go and take a bite out of it. Yeah. Can you do that? No. No chance. It's just not a natural thing for a human being to eat meat. Yeah, I mean, the meat we, we eat, we buy it in a supermarket, it's processed, it's packed, it's pre-cooked most of the time. It, yeah, yeah. they've got to put it into an oven, and yeah. cook it at a ridiculously high temperature, burn it for hours before it's, it's edible. And you think, well, how is that natural? Um, we, I, I can't believe that we started eating meat until we developed tools, which is a long way into the evolution. Yeah. Now, tools are unnatural, so eating meat's unnatural because you have to use tools and you have to use fire right. to, get to eat the meat. Milk is from another species. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> could argue that we're, we're quite ingenious, so we, 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 we can eat dairy, that's a natural thing to do. I don't think it is. I don't think it's natural to eat baby milk of another species. No, I mean, when you There's say no that, it makes no sense. no species on this planet that drinks milk no. after they wean. And yet, when we see a mother breastfeeding in public, people will find that disgusting. <laughs> or the idea of drinking another woman's milk, Absolutely, people yeah. find that disgusting. Yeah. But to drink the milk of a cow, so they illogical. find that normal, delicious, yeah. and they'll make a cappuccino this, out of it. They'll this, froth it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Ooh, this, yeah. Again, this, this is another one of these things where I thought, I'm just on the wrong planet here. Yeah. It's all nonsense. It's all totally illogical. Um, but then, age of 50, I met another vegan who knew what the word that vegan That can't be the first one, was it? That was my first one. That was 2006. 2007, 2008, got onto the internet. That yeah. was when it was coming in for me, at least at that age. And suddenly felt, well, it's, there are vegans out there. This, yeah, yeah. this might be the right planet after <laughs> all. And I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I'm too old for all that sort of you've stuff. You've got quite a lot of, a fol of followers, considering you have zero posts. I think you've got more followers than I have, and you're not on even Instagram. active. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't got a smartphone. Uh, That's the thing. I could set it up on my laptop. Right. But for some reason, you can't post via your laptop. Yeah, you, you need it on your phone, yeah. Yeah. So I set it all up and I thought, right, let's see how we can post some pictures. I know I couldn't do it. Yeah. And then keeps telling me in my email that, oh, you've got a new follower. You've got a new follower. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> all I've got is a profile picture. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, set up a Facebook account about 2008, 2009, and found that there are vegan groups with 130,000 plus members. 130,000 members, it's more than that, actually. Yeah. There, there are a huge amount. The, the interest in it has just gone through the roof. Yeah, it's, I mean, I wanted to go back on one thing, is that you said you researched when you were young. Where did you gain your information yeah. from in the well, 60s, the, the 70s, some, there 80s? There was something in those days called a book. A what? A oh, book? Yeah, yeah, we, don't, yeah. we don't have them anymore. No, no, nobody reads books anymore. There wasn't that many books. You used to get them from libraries, particularly, or you could order them from libraries, the kind of microfiche. There was one called, it was called why, why, we don't need, why You Don't Need Meat. Right. That made a hell of an impression on me. When was this published? God knows. Yeah. I don't know. It's all woolly back in the old days. I think the guy was called Peter Carey. Can't be sure. It's something right. like I'll that. double check and I'll put a link anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I think there was a subsequent book came out called The New Why You Don't Need Meat. Now, it wasn't... It wasn't vegan as such, because the argument was, well, the title gives you a clue, telling you why you don't need to eat meat. Whereas veganism isn't about that. Yeah. We, we may need to eat meat, but we don't want to. Yeah. We don't actually need to eat meat anyway. 
but if we did, we wouldn't. we have been living a lie if <laughs> we did. Because we're not doing it for ourselves, we're doing yeah. it for the other species exactly. on this planet. Yeah. We don't want to terrorise planet Earth, which is what we're doing at the minute, and messing the environment up at the same time. So there was that. That made a huge impression. I can remember reading that, and it vindicated everything I thought, Right. which is good. There's somebody out there. There is one person out there, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember thinking, the, the amount of disease that's related, and this was in the 60s, I'm pretty sure it was 60s, that's real, and there's a hell of a lot more come out since. The amount of diseases which are related to meat eating, I thought, I'd, I'd, I'd be safe with smoking cigarettes yeah. than eating meat. Yeah. Seriously, I can remember thinking that. Um, Did you start smoking now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but if, if I'd given the choice, yeah. eat meat, smoke 40 fags a day, I'd have gone for the fags. Fair so, enough. So, yeah. yeah. Purely simply for health yeah. reasons. In the... Now then, a bit later than this, there, there's, veganism's been around quite a while. Yeah. Um, you can... You look at the Jainism movement in India. Yeah, that's... You've heard of yeah, it. Yeah, of course, They're yeah. vegans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a vegan movement. But they don't eat anything that has roots as well. well you know it goes right even further than... Yeah. Yeah, it goes even deeper. So the, 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 there are peoples out there, cultures and things, who don't yeah. eat meat. Um, I imagine there's cultures out there who can't afford to eat meat. Yeah, well. I mean, most of... Incidentally, uh, if there's anybody out there thinking that meat's cheap, Read the label. Read what they call the macronutrient profile on the label. If it's got a label, yeah, it tells you per 100 grams what's in that food. So 100 grams of meat, you have about 20 grams of protein, 10 grams of fat. There's no carbohydrate, so no fiber in it. So protein, fat, makes up 30 grams. That's the food in 100 grams of meat. Yeah. So you think, oh, what's this? there's 70 grams there missing. It's water. It's bloody 70% water. It's expensive and that's water. added water. I mean, yeah. fruit's 80, 90% water. Yeah. It's pretty healthy stuff. But you don't pay for it. When you buy a kilo of meat, yeah. you gain about 300 grams of food. And that food's going to kill you anyway, so... Yeah, I mean, the World Health Organization has declared processed meats as a type 1 carcinogen. Mm. Um, yeah. People don't believe that. <laughs> Don't want to believe and, but it. people believe that fruit isn't healthy. Mm. Mm. What do you think about that? Do you think that you can eat too much fruit? Well, you can kill yourself on anything, can't you? You can eat too much of anything. You can, yeah. kill, you can drink too much water and die. People True. die from yeah, drinking yeah. too much. It's a sad death, really, isn't it? <laughs> but there again, you feel full. You yeah. listen to your body, don't you? Um, fruit fills you a hell of a lot faster than me. Yeah. Uh, a lot cheaper. And there, there was something, I presume it's still going. Uh, from America called the Natural Hygiene Society. Okay. Do you remember that? I haven't heard that when I look into that. Your time, right? Natural Hygiene Society brought out a monthly or probably tri-monthly magazine. Yeah. Really glossy magazine. All vegan. Wow. Recipes, theories, uh, what we call blog, not blogs really, because it's in a magazine, but yeah. articles. <laughs> That's before blogs, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Articles, blogs is a more magazine two thousand thing, isn't it? But it yeah. was very motivational. Yeah. And it was done very professionally. And that is something which um, went back to the nineteenth century in America. So what about the um, the Vegan Society? That was founded in nineteen forty four. Yeah, that's much later. Yeah, isn't Donald it? Watson. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. he coined the term vegan. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah which before that. Yeah. So this 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 is in America and this was going back to the 19th century, late 19th, so 1800 and something. Right, yeah. Even you weren't born then. Uh, I wouldn't know. I wasn't around, yeah. strangely enough, in those <laughs> days. Uh, well, maybe, but not in this particular body. In your past one, um, yeah. And th there was a guy who actually invented some sort of cereal in America. Americans will know who I'm talking about. It's still going. Right. In those days as well, they got lots of very strange ideas and I think he did counter quite a lot of those. We, we don't hear about it in Britain because it's American. Um, if you were ill, you had to stay in a room and shut all the windows. You got t TB was quite a big problem. Yeah. Though, so fresh air was considered dangerous. <laughs> More dangerous than fruit? or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? Tomatoes. That's right. Strange enough. 
Tomatoes were thought to be poisonous because I think they come botanically from the same family as some, something which is poisonous, some poisonous flower. Okay. They, they were thought to be poisonous. You, wouldn't, you shouldn't eat tomatoes. I live on tomatoes. I have tons of tomatoes. Do you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you grow yeah. any? No. No. Huh? We tried, but <laughs> <laughs> not in Cheshire. The climate's not that good. Yeah. Um, but what I do, I, I had seven years as a raw vegan. Right, yeah. There was, a, there was a magazine from Britain in those days called the Fresh Network okay. magazine. And that was a group of hundreds of people. I'm talking about 90s, 80s and 90s. Right? And they brought a magazine out. They were into raw, raw vegan food. Right. And there was lots of scientific articles and things like that. Now, when you eat cooked food, this is one of the reasons for eating raw, you have an immune response. The white blood cell count goes up. Okay. Your body views cooked food as a bit of an intrusion, foreign body. And the white blood cell count goes up. That's why you feel a bit exhausted after a big meal, big cooked meal. One of the reasons. Um, if you eat raw food, you don't get that response. Your body's right. fine with it, understands raw food. Which, again, can, when you go back to our evolutionary days, you understand that, because there, there was no... Yeah, there were no rice cookers. There, there were no were... ovens in the, in the yeah. equatorial rainforest, were there? You just ate food as it was, and if you couldn't eat it without cooking, you didn't eat it. <laughs> that makes so sense, yeah. <laughs> they found that you can eat cooked food and negate, obviate, the immune response. Right by eating something raw before the cooked food. That fools your body. Ah, so, so have I, an appetizer. Yeah, I, I always have tomatoes. Okay, so eat the raw food first and then eat the cooked yeah. So why did you stop the raw vegan diet? I wanted to get back into training. Okay. I'd gone off training for a bit. I was, I was working for TV and it was a sort of 24-7 thing. Yeah. I didn't have time to train. I just wanted to get back into training. I couldn't do it on a raw diet. I, I did work out subsequently how many... Ca you, you don't work out calories on the road, don't you? Don't, you don't obsess about yeah. calories or It's numbers. not a diet, is it? You're eating as much as you can, I suppose. Yeah, I was, I was eating constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I worked out I was getting about 1,200 calories a day, and that was eating all the yeah. time. I tried to increase the energy intake by eating coconuts. Could they raw? Yeah. If I eat a coconut, it's going to take you at least an hour. It's a pain. Uh, you're going to uh, seriously chew, 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 and an hour's gone by, and you've still got half of it left. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a thing of convenience, yeah. really. And you do have to buy a lot of stuff. Okay. You're buying every day yeah. fresh food, fruit, uh, leafy greens. I used to get big... You can get coconuts in sacks. That's how they sell them. In the tray. Grown in Macclesfield. <laughs> no, they're imported. The great big sacks, 25 in a sack, 25 or 30. And I used to buy them in sacks, 25, 30 at a time. Problem Did was, you have a big uh, knife to cut through it? Or you must have got quite no, good no, at that. No, there is a technique. If you've got a stone step, grab hold of the... Well, what you've got to do, there's three eyes at the top. So you've, two of them are pierceable, one of them isn't. So you pierce the two which are which you can poke a, right. a skewer through, drink the milk, which isn't milk, it's juice, coconut juice, which is the nicest drink in the world when it's not gone off. Yeah. When it has gone off. Oh, yeah, off, the smell of it. It is disgusting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you don't know until you take your first sip. Right. But anyway. <laughs> Living on the edge. Then you get your coconut and you crack it, hit it on the equator of a stone step. And it cracks and you can pull it apart. Then you get a knife and cut, cut it to bits. And it does take a long while to eat. So it was a thing of convenience, right. really. I, I, got into the, I got to the point, and this is easy to do with food and any other things. You can let the food control you rather than you controlling the food. Okay. Um, and I was eating raw food... And it was controlling me. Right, yeah. So it, it, was a, it was a bit of an obsession. And it, I think it became a disorder. It, arguably, I, I could say it, it was a disorder because 
I was wanting to do things, other things, go out and do do stuff, go for a walk, blah blah blah. And I couldn't because I had to finish this bloody coconut, <laughs> you know. And I'm thinking this this food, this this lifestyle is controlling me. Yeah. It's stopping me doing what I want to do. Of course, do. yeah. So you saw your first, you met your first vegan not that long ago, really, then, wasn't it? Like you mm. said, 2005. Yeah, about mentioned. 13 years ago, 2006, yeah. when I was 50. Right. <laughs> How did that happen? That was the first person I'd met who, well, who admitted to being vegan. Who is this person? Well, it was a lady, I don't know, I can't even remember her name. I was at the leisure centre in Congleton. This is when I started training again. And um, you got chatting to people in there because yeah. it's quite a small little gym. Okay. And she got, I um, can't remember what it be in those days, Walkman or something like that. She was in there training on a, one of these stationary bikes. Yeah. I remember she did say to me that she was, um, we got into conversation, she meant she, meant she was vegan. <laughs> and I thought, well, what were you listening to on your Walkman? She said, The Archers. <laughs> You've got to be vegan, haven't you? Yeah. You know, to go into the gym and work out to the arches. That's not exactly motivating, is it? What do you <laughs> exactly. listen to? Hmm? What do you listen to in the gym? Well, I've stopped doing it now. Um, I've stopped using I had an iPod. Right. But I'm thinking that is going to affect your hearing. Well... What? It depends how loud you're listening to it. What? Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> Maybe you should bring it back. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, the iPod, what I had on it, was 1970s stuff, which is when I was a teenager. T-Rex, Led Zeppelin, Good stuff. Genesis, yeah, yeah, Pink Floyd. Now, when you're listening to that, you can always convince yourself you're still 19. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've so, seen you in the gym, and there'll be footage to that, yeah, actually. Yeah, a you're lot of it like... is, is up here. Yeah. If you, you don't feel 63, right, yeah. you're not going to work out as though you're 63. Of course, and about that, um, do you feel like you embrace your age or are you, are you fighting against it? Oh, great, that's, that's a question. Well, I do tell people, on, as you know, Yeah. When I, put, when I put anything on Facebook, GB's 63-year-old lifelong yeah. vegan, and so, that, that's the, yeah. I, so I do embrace it yeah. because it does help yeah. me show people that veganism is so bloody healthy. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've this deserved is me your... at sixty-three. Yeah. You know, and you, there's twenty-three-year-olds out there who can't do what I'm doing. No. Can't even look right. No, definitely not. No. 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 Even twenty-seven-year-old vegans can't do what you're <laughs> doing. So uh, you've got time to catch up. Oh yeah, I've got yeah, a, yeah got quite yeah. a few years to yeah. to get there. Well, uh, yeah, and the reason yeah. I say that is because I did an episode um, two weeks ago with Sophie Benker from Switzerland, mm. and she's thirty-nine. And I said to her, "You don't look a day over twenty-one." And she said, "That's only a compliment because people aren't allowed to age in our society, especially women," mm. which is very true. I mean. You're 63, you deserve to be 63. That's the age you are, and you've achieved mm. a lot. And we always are afraid of aging. Yeah, just a bit more on that. Um, yeah, I, I do embrace my age. I'm quite happy to be 63. I don't want to be 21 again. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be 19 again. I'm, I'm pretty healthy, healthy enough. I can work out every day for a couple of hours. I think the thing with age is you've got, 63 years experience of this planet yeah anybody younger than that hasn't got the experience that i've got absolutely so i do feel quite happy to be 63. My, my missus works as a teacher with a lot of young people and she's got the opposite attitude she thinks they think that she's an old woman yeah at 61. um and i say to her they're probably jealous of you because you've got so much more experience. You've lived 61 years. They haven't yet. Yeah. You know? And you survived it, you've come through it. They've still got to go through all that. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I can remember working um, as an entertainment agent. This is my attitude to age. And it's based on sound principles. I had about 10, 12 people come for a job working in the office where I was. And uh, 
I gave the job to a retired lady who was about 67 because she was so much better than everybody else. Yeah. She could handle all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of discrimination towards that in in our society about people, oh, you've hit 50, you're over the hill, you've hit 60, you're over the hill, there's nothing you can contribute. But these people have so much experience and so much they can bring to the table. Yeah, Yeah. I I think it's better employing somebody who's been there and done it and they're still learning. A lot of the people that listen to this, they're approaching 30 or they're around 30. They so, think they're old. Yeah, they've hit yeah. that 30 year crisis. I need to get married. I need to settle down. I need mm. to buy a house. I need to get a real job. I need to sort my life out. Yeah. So, what would you say to these people who are in that 30 year old crisis? Old age is always 10 years older than you are. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. That's a good way to live. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, the, that's an old saying that you're never old because old age is always 10 years further on yeah. than what the age you are. I can remember being a teenager quite well and thinking anybody over 30 was over the hill. Yeah. And you're not. Comes around pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the older you get, the faster it comes around. Um, yeah, we, we are getting people, particularly in the fitness industry and in terms of sports, saying that you're over the, about 35, you're an old man. Yeah. In football. Yeah. 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 And the problem is people think that. They hear it so often. They believe it. And they do go downhill. They stop trying. Yeah. I mean, your performance I'm has increased, that, hasn't it? In, yeah, in, in, I'm hoping that people can see, look, I'm 63. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing. You're 43. You've got 20 years to do this and catch up. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. just got to start, haven't you? Mm. They do say the longest journey starts with a single step, don't they? So you just got to get that ball rolling yeah, in the right it, it direction. Is, it's, it's up here. Yeah. It, it is. The, the mind does control yeah. the body. And if you think... There, there, was, a, there was a study came out quite recently um, where they found that people who s- subjectively think they're old get more illness. Okay. If you subjectively think, and you take no notice of what age you are, but if you think you're pretty young, you don't get the illnesses. Right. And it's, it's the mindset that, oh, God, 60, 63. And I can remember my grandmother being 63, and she was, you know, in a wheelchair and past it. I think it's completely different as well now. I mean, you used to think of 60-year-olds, they were all crooked and bent over, whereas yeah. now, like... 40s, the new 30s, 60s, the new 40s. Yeah, com- these, it's completely yeah. changed, that balance. Oh, and right. another interesting part about that is the type of training that you do, super calisthenics, mm-hmm. which sounds like something out of Mary Poppins. <laughs> you talk about activating long, ongoing neuroplasticity. Mm. Yeah, that, that's something I'm, I'm investigating, examining, yeah. developing. Um, people tend not to think about that. Yeah, it, it, I did, again, I told you, I watched an awful lot of stuff on YouTube, and there was a TED talk about um, neuroplasticity. That is, your brain's ability to, do, to change its function, structure, and chemistry. Right. They used to think it ended when you became an adult, so mid-teenage, your brain was set in stone, wasn't going to change. They've subsequently found that by learning new physical skills, your brain will adapt. And it's quite logical when you think about it, because your brain's in control of your body. If your body's doing something new, your brain has to adapt yeah. to it. Uh, something called neurogenesis as well, where it's building new brain cells. Okay. But neuroplasticity means that your brain will keep on adapting. Improve. Adapting means improving. It's structure, function, and chemistry. Now, your brain... If your brain's adapting and improving, that means that your body is able to adapt and improve because your body's controlled by your brain. So you've got this positive feedback loop going on. You're doing new stuff with your body, your brain's improving, which means you can do even more new stuff. Right. Difficult stuff. Okay. Well, you've seen what I can do there. Yeah. That, that sort of thing makes your brain change. Okay? And once your brain changes... Your body will change because yeah. you're able to do more things, yeah. and it's um, it's something I'm I'm quite excited about th- this thing where you're actually training to improve your brain rather than improve your body, but your body will improve as a secondary. Yeah, issue. kind of hand in hand, yeah. don't they? Yeah. yeah, it's interesting with your that body approach will follow as well. Yeah. Rather than trying to improve your body, 
Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not in favour of the weight. All, it's almost like a religion now. Everybody has to lift weights. Yeah, yeah. How much do you lift and how much can you bench press and how much can you yeah. do? Yeah. No, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was at school, I went into a gym. There was nowhere to sit down. There was nowhere to lie down. Now, you go into a gym these days and people say, well, it's to counteract a sedentary lifestyle, but join a gym. Everybody's sitting down. Yes, yeah, true. Well, they're lying down. Yeah. You know, you're switching off most of your body. So it's not functional. Yeah. Fine, you, you can bench press 200K, but you're lying on your back to do it. <laughs> Try some press-ups. Yeah. Uh, and we isolate muscles as well, don't we, in the work? Why would you do that? Yeah. Well, why I, I don't you, know how you nothing. isolate I mean, muscles? clearly, I'm not an example no. of fitness here, so... <laughs> well, you are, because you're not overweight. Well, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was walking through Manchester, and there are some, there are some big people in There's Manchester. An awful lot. When, when I was... Um, I was at primary school, and when I was at grammar school, so we're talking 60s and early 70s, there was usually one fat kid. Right. Pardon me, I'm not supposed to use the word fat now, am I? I mean, one to be honest, like, this, isn't, this isn't a normal of source of media. In a class, yeah. there was one. Now it's most of them. Yeah, it's, it, that's a fact. There's no... And you wonder... Oh, what, what else has changed in this time? Meat eating has changed because people didn't used to eat meat yeah. anywhere near as often as they do today. They couldn't afford it. Yeah, it's a luxury item. Yeah. So the, the meat eating curve's gone up and the obesity curve's gone up and they follow each other. And the school meals as well. That's mm. something I wanted to talk to you about. So yeah. how did you manage in school on your vegan diet? <laughs> in school lunches where even when I was a kid it was slop on the tray yeah, kind of yeah. bacon every day I only remember this quite recently I used to um, take food that my mother prepared for me in a little container and go and sit in the cloakroom and eat it why not with the other kids because of the smell and the yeah. sight of what they were eating well, it's, it's so repulsive to you isn't yeah. it yeah I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sit next to somebody. That's why I don't particularly like restaurants. Right. You've got somebody there on that table, some sizzly, beefy, horrible stuff. Yeah. I'm, it's coming into my nose, and I'm breathing in that. I'm trying to eat something healthy. Yeah. Kind, cruelty-free. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm not a big fan of restaurants. So the, the, the school dining room... Uh, got the canteen right next to it. So you've got all the cooking smells, plus the fact that all the kids were around you, you know, the horrible custards and... Yeah. Uh, Pink and custard butter. was the one that always put me off. Uh, yeah. I, 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 it, it's enough to make you not want to eat. Yeah. So I used to, go, I used to sit in the cloakroom on my own and eat um, apples and oranges and grapes and stuff like that. And what did the other kids think of you? I can't, I can't remember. This is going back, you know, to the 60s. This is primary school. Yeah. Um, I don't think we know this. But, but because they'd eat the food, then they'd be out in the playground. Yeah. They'd be, be with them in the playground. But they didn't see you as different. I don't think you saw me. I think I went and hid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just disappear for a few room. minutes. Yeah. Didn't want the teachers to find me. Yeah. Um, because they say, well, go and get back in that town. Yeah, yeah. Eat, like, your, oh, eat your horrible. sausages and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. hell in there. Um, so, so what do you think about all of the meat replacement products now that are coming into the market? Burger King also, they're doing a, a yeah. vegan burger, and I think KFC are looking into it as well, and McDonald's are even looking yeah, into I, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're making vegan food to resemble stuff which repulses me. Yeah. But... For other people, I yeah. think it's fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. Because I know if you've been eating the standard American diet, the sad diet, for such a long while, you become emotionally attached to it. Yeah. And transition into something completely new. Yeah, to go difficult. from that to raw vegan would yeah. be completely yeah, impossible. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's going to make things easier for people. I'm in favour of that. Yeah. It's, it's, I know a lot of it is down to practicality. Yeah. What are we going to eat? You know, uh, how am I going to cook it? Yeah, it's a good transition. But if you can buy, yeah, you can buy vegan sausages to replace your animal-based sausages, 
That's fantastic because there's very little transition to make there. Yeah. Um, and it's healthier, it's better for the environment, and it's most importantly better for the animals as well. So I think yeah. anyone would make that decision if they have yeah. the option. And yeah. I think that is big, what we're big, moving towards. Yeah, a big fan of these people who are making vegan options. Yeah. Or even vegetarian options. I mean, goodness sake, I know a lot of vegans are very anti-vegetarian. And I think it's better than a meat eater. So yeah. I think they're on our side. Yeah, I mean, it's one step in the right direction, but it's true the dairy industry is very, very cruel. And yeah. some argue it's even worse than the meat industry because it's the extended suffering of animals. Yeah, they're going in the right direction, though. Yeah. You know, it's, they're giving up meat. And yeah. I know a lot of vegetarians do think that the next step will be veganism, not going back to eating meat. Yeah. So the, the momentum is towards veganism if you go vegetarian. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are obviously people who have that mentality that it has to be 100% vegan, 100% vegan now, which in I, ideally I believe I that's true. I wouldn't recommend that. I don't think people can do it if you've been on a normal yeah. diet for such a long while. The way I went fruitarian, I think, was best. The best way to transition was to... I, I went fruitarian two days a week. Right. And then I thought, I'll add another day because I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah. So three days and then four days and then for over a period of time. And I think... That's, that's a really good way to transition to vegan. So you suggest people kind of try maybe one meal a day or one day a week yeah, or something? Yeah, just do a like day a week. Okay, yeah. One or two days a week, yeah. try it. You will enjoy it. You'll feel yeah. better and you want to add another day. Yeah. And then you want to add another. And before you know where you are, you're doing seven yeah, days. Yeah, it's easy. And before vegans start hating on vegetarians, what I'm trying to do here and what we're trying to do with the people that I bring on is to bring people together instead yeah. of wasting our time fighting over who's yeah. better, who's worse. Yeah. I mean, it's the systemic change that we're trying to work towards yeah. and to change. Well, Veganery does that really well. Yeah. I'm really impressed with the website. Yeah. And you're yeah. an ambassador for mm. uh, Veganery and you have a very cool bag as well that uh, <laughs> I have a picture of. Do you want to just show it quickly to the camera so people can yeah. see it? I think it's th the coolest bag ever. It's this, is, this is always pretty prominently um, on display whenever I'm working out. Yeah. And some people come up and say, are you vegan? Which is great. That's yeah, all yeah. you need. Yeah. <laughs> You're off. Yeah. You? Yeah. Well, where do I start, you know, this yeah. conversation? How long have you got? Yeah. Um, well, you've got 63 years of it, so you've got plenty to share. Yeah, yeah. So how, how does it work with Veganuary? Because a lot of people listening to this aren't vegan yet and maybe interested in trying it. So what's the idea behind Veganuary? It, it's really, it, it, what, what, what I was saying, it's just saying try it. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not sort of getting at you. Yeah. Just give it a go. You, you may actually like it. And so many people do try it. Just, oh, I've always been interested in veganism. And this is a website here where it's giving me all the tips. It's telling me what I can eat, yeah. you know, where to buy it. Motivation. They send you motivational emails all the time. Just giving people the chance to try it. Um, we're not accusing anybody of anything. Try it. If you don't like it, fine. You give yeah. it a go. Do you, do you have to do it in January or can you do it any time of the year? It's, it's promoted for January. Yeah. Um, ideally, I think it would have been better in the summer because in January in this country, it's bloody cold. You always want hot food, don't you? Yeah. But in summer, that was when I became a fruitarian. Maybe for the beach food. body, for that yeah. beach body period. Yeah, yeah. Um, I became fruitarian in the summer. I didn't want to cook anything because it was just too hot. I didn't yeah. want to put the oven on. Um, but it's really it's working really well. A lot of people tried it and like it so much they stay for the rest of the year. And once once you've done it for a length of time, you don't want to go back. Yeah, your taste buds change as well, and the habits that you have, the approach to food changes completely. I mean. I don't want to go back to eating meat anymore. No. Just because the idea of the taste, the texture and all that you, stuff, you, I've, you, I've broken you, away from that now. You and will adapt yeah. to it. And then you kind of understand all the cruelty that's behind it, the environmental impact that it's having. Yeah. So that's when you're like, no, actually, I don't want to it, go back. Yeah. It is one of those things, your taste buds will adapt. They'll go back to normal, Yeah. I think. I think they will go back to normal. You enjoy proper food. And peop I, I eat pretty limited diet because I don't like so many things. But the stuff I eat is very satisfying because I don't get bored. Right. I don't get bored with this. No. 
I know people get bored on a meat diet and they have to keep changing, having different things all the time. That's the boring diet. Yeah. This isn't because it's so natural. Um, going back to evolutionary times, we didn't eat a varied diet. No. You could only eat what was available within walking distance in a day. You didn't have supermarkets in the rainforest, did you? No. Which is stocked with all kinds of stuff. And that's pretty much what my yeah. diet is. It's pretty much the same every yeah. day, but I enjoy it. I don't get bored. I know a lot of other people wouldn't, would find it pretty boring, pretty limiting. Yeah, and as you're in the fitness world, I wanted to touch on the keto diet and these fat, low, um, low carb, high fat diets that mm. people, they always seem to compare veganism to these diets. Like, oh, I was going to go vegan, but I went keto instead. <laughs> but veganism isn't a diet, it's a choice of life to Absolutely. reduce compassion. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a diet because you can eat as much as you want. Whereas yeah. keto is extremely restrictive when it yeah. comes to... Yeah, there must be people here that are doing these diets, I believe. Presumably, yeah. yeah. I think... I'm, I'm not sure, but I think this could be promoted by the meat and dairy industry. Yeah. Because they're, they're pretty worried. Of course, The, the yeah. uprising veganism, yeah. the people not eating meat, even if they're not going vegan, they couldn't help meat from the diet and dairy. And it's worrying them. Yeah. And I think they're coming up with stuff like this. This is a ketogenic diet. Cut out the carbohydrate. Well, meat is just protein and fat. It's almost the default thing. You're going to cut that carbohydrate out. You, you look at the meat because protein and fat, there's no carbs in meat. <laughs> no fiber either. Yeah. Your body needs fiber. That's one of the macronutrients, vital macronutrients. But you're on a, in a meat diet, high protein, high fat, you're not getting any fiber. Yeah, it is. And they cut out fruit as well. Yeah. And you went 100% fruitarian or... Absolutely. I lost weight, man. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Just eating fruit. And no one can stick long term to a keto diet because it's proven to be bad for your health over an extended Absolutely, amount of yeah. time. Yeah. But you can't tell people. They'll find out for themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's their own health, isn't it, mm. actually? I mean, what happens, I think, with a ketogenic diet is if you, you cut out the carbohydrates, what, first thing that happens is your body starts burning stored glycogen. Right. You've got glycogen, which is carbohydrate, stored in your muscle tissue and liver. And it gets rid of that. All that goes. So your weight will drop because it's burned all the stored carbohydrate. In that carbohydrate, your body's been storing water, and I think it's a one to three ratio. So for every gram of glycogen, you've got three grams of water. So once the glycogen's gone, the water goes, and you can't store the water either. So your weight will drop again. It's not fat. Your weight's gone down, but it's glycogen and water that have disappeared from oh, your body. Okay. Yeah, because people think they're burning fat, don't it's they? It's quite a clever thing. Yeah. It's quite a clever thing, but it's not fat that's gone. Your weight's dropped because you've lost the glycogen, you've lost the water stored in the glycogen, and then you, your body's got to work uh, <laughs> trying to burn fat. What happens is something called gluconeogenesis. When there's no carbohydrate available, your body starts breaking down protein. And you say... Look at gluconeogenesis. Right. It's your body eating itself that, for energy. That's not and very vegan if your body's eating itself, is it really? Well, it is. Yeah, vegan. I mean, it's not very vegan. <laughs> but it, people misunderstand veganism. Yeah. You, you're not being cruel to an animal. No, of course not. Oh, yeah. It's like I smoked for 10 years and people are like, you're vegan, but you smoke. It's like, yeah, I, it's my health. It's not. Yeah. P people extended. do associate vegan. That's a, a good thing because they associate veganism with health. Yeah. With, with good health. Um, theoretically, you can eat an animal and be vegan. Walking through a field, see a dead animal on the ground, you can eat it, it's dead. It's already dead. You wouldn't, Yeah. You, <laughs> but you could. That's, that's the thing, people misunderstand veganism. It's about avoiding cruelty to animals. Yeah, okay. So animals died of a natural cause. If you can't eat it, you wouldn't do. We, we no. wouldn't do. No, I mean, even, even meat eaters it. wouldn't wouldn't eat no. an animal that is just already dead. Meat eaters wouldn't eat, eat animals if they weren't uh, uh, wouldn't eat meat if it weren't coloured and doctored. Yeah, meat is grey. You go into a supermarket and if you look at the meat counter, you see it's red. All kinds of. 
if, if that were natural, if they hadn't coloured it, it would be grey and it would look horrible. Yeah. But it's a corpse. Yeah, it's, it's a, a dead a body, corpse. isn't it? People don't relate to that anymore. They don't yeah. really realise what, what is behind that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard lots of people say, oh, you, you wouldn't bring a corpse into a kitchen, would you? Well, that's what you're doing <laughs> all the bloody time, mate. You know, if you're eating meat. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. So when you were growing up and you were the only vegan around, did you have any role models that you looked up to? Any vegan famous people that you could possibly... No, I've never done role models. No, never. No, I, I don't understand. You do that. seem very much on your own path, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. I think being being vegan, that's what you have to be. Yeah. You know, you have to be responsible to yourself. You don't model yourself on anybody else. Yeah. Because everybody else ain't me. You said something quite interesting earlier when um, I was filming oh, you I when you're doing it, at least one interesting <laughs> thing in about an hour. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Huh. It was um, if you want to be the best, don't copy everybody else. Yeah, that's, it sounds awfully big-headed, doesn't it? It's if you want to be better than everybody else, don't do what everybody else does. Yeah, that's better. That, you you no. put that better again, yeah. In terms of exercise. Yeah. It could be in terms of diet. Yeah, I mean, why not relate yeah. that to, to the diet? So when did you see the real rise in veganism of what it is today? It's, it's happened in about the past decade, I yeah. would say. It's, and I think we were talking earlier about social media. Yeah. There are no secrets anymore on social media. Definitely. Either. Everybody yeah. knows everything. And we're finding out now there are an awful lot of people who are vegan and who aren't pale, weak, skinny, seven-stone weaklings. Yeah. That myth has been busted wide open. Um, Facebook told you that there's, there's groups out there with a quarter of a million people. That's insane, in isn't vegan it? groups. Do you want to name a few of those groups? Do you remember I them? can't remember yeah. them. There's that bloody many, yeah. honestly. I mean, I found you through the One Billion Vegans group. I think there's about 13,000. There's 13, two 000. of those. There's yeah. two One Billion Vegan That's groups. That's two billion vegans then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two of those. Yeah. Um, there's Vegan AF, and then there's Vegan... Blah, blah, blah. There's Vegan Bodybuilding... Yeah. And nutrition. There's vegan bodybuilding without nutrition. There's vegan bodybuilding and fitness unfiltered. I mean, honestly, when, when I'm on Facebook, you put vegan in and there's a list yeah. of things come up, a list of groups. But the biggest ones are the recipes. It, it, it does tend to be diet related. Yeah, I mean, I think people need that self interest and it has to benefit them. That's the difficult for them bit about being yeah. vegan, isn't it? That's a diff that, for, for a lot of people transitioning to veganism, it, 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 you've got to get the diet right. Yeah. Because they're so used to eating animal derived products. Um, I don't know if I told you, but in my day, you would go into a supermarket and there'd be fruit and veg and that would be it. A few cans of beans and you wouldn't get... You have to go to a health food shop to get some decent vegan food. Right. And did they, and that, and did they stock products then? Hmm? They stocked some vegan products then in the health food shops? Yeah. What kind yeah. of stuff was it that you could find? <laughs> you always had to have bruised yeast for some reason. Okay. That, was what, that was one of the must-haves on, on your shopping list. You had to get bruised yeast, which is powder. I think it's something to do with the B vitamins in it. Oatmeal. Okay. It was a good health food shop. There's three types of oatmeal. Pinhead, coarse, and something in between. Wheat germ. Right. You can buy wheat germ, but that went off pretty quickly. Soya milk. Totally unflavoured. And it tasted like liquid sawdust. Really? But yeah, but you didn't care. Yeah. Because you didn't know any different. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you've got oat milk, you've got rice milk, yeah, hemp yeah. milk, um, that pea started, milk. Yeah. That started, there was two companies, one called Alpha and one called Provermel. And they started about, well, in supermarkets growing their ranges about 15 years ago. And I can remember going in to Tesco and seeing... Alpro yogurts, yep. soy milk, custard, and cream, right? All vegan. And I thought, it doesn't get any better than this. When was that? But it bloody did. Well, when was this that you saw? About 15 years ago. Oh, that was 15 years ago? Yeah, okay. 15 years ago. I saw that th these were growing. Now, obviously, people were buying them because they're bringing new stuff out. They developed a custard and they developed a dessert chocolate-flavoured, vanilla-flavoured dessert. And I, I can remember thinking, 
she it does not get any better than this. I've gone into a supermarket and there's vegan stuff here, but it did get better. And it still is. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we're getting sports brands now, making protein things. Pea, power, pea proteins. And yeah, I, I, I'll, get, I'll, give, um, I'll give a big distributor um, in Britain a mention called Powerbody. Okay. We buy from them. We buy trade stuff from Powerbody. Excellent. They've got categories. Clothing, amino acids, um, CBD. I've actually got that. We've got a vegan category now. Really? Yeah. All the products. Speak. You click on the... So it's so easy to find. And they something. deliver as well? Click on... The, hmm? Do they deliver? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Well, I'll put a link to them if people are interested. Yeah. You might as well. Our body, vegan category. Okay. So you don't have to keep going through all the bloody proteins yeah. and meal replacements and finding what ingredients yeah. are in there. Yeah, all this casein. They've done that and, for yeah. you. And this, this is a very big company. Right. And they brought this category out vegan. I thought, that's... That's we we know. Yeah, we really I mean, have do you arrived. Think, do you think all the big companies now that are turning towards the vegan products? Do you think they're doing it because they've changed their ethics or because they see financial gain? It's financial, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, th that said, um, I, I am an ambassador for a couple of companies, smaller companies. One's called I Am Vegan Protein. Okay. Dot com, um, and they are doing it because they do believe. They are themselves vegan. Right, okay. There's a lot of companies which have got vegan stuff and non vegan stuff. Yeah. They're not a vegan brand. Are you? Yeah, they're vegan if you, friendly. If you're selling whey protein alongside plant protein, you're not a vegan brand. You've got vegan products, but you're not a vegan brand. There are vegan brands out there and they're run by vegans. Okay. I mean, that's, that's the stuff that we want to support as well. And I think the more offer that's there more people are going to consume Absolutely, as well and yeah that's that's the thing yeah. it's, it's sort of chicken yeah. and egg thing. yeah what came first for you the chicken or the egg there, there is an answer to that isn't there uh, <laughs> well you mean literally literally i was discussing I think it's this the morning. egg isn't it i think i think the answer to that one is the egg came before yeah. the chicken I can, I can remember stephen fry explaining yeah, it yeah yeah and i've forgotten and after, that's a different story. But a lot of people ask me about the vegan protein powders. Mm. And are they effective? Do you recommend them? Do you think it's better than the whey protein that people... Oh, it's much better than whey protein. Yeah. Do you oh, take oh, any... Man, seriously. Uh, <laughs> this is such a big con, whey yeah. protein. In the 60s, they used to tip it down the drain. Farmers, dairy farmers, would tip whey protein way down the drain. Right. Because... Cow's milk, cow's milk is casein, mainly casein. Yeah. And it's 80% casein protein, 20% whey protein. So nature doesn't even think whey protein is that good because it's, it's a one to four ratio. Casein, there's four times as much casein in milk than there is whey. Okay. Casein is used for cheese. Yeah. Ugh, cheese. I feel ill <laughs> mentioning the word. But casein, they use casein from milk to make cheese. The whey protein, which was the byproduct, was tipped down the drain. They wouldn't even feed it to animals. Okay. Somebody had a bright idea. Why don't we spray dry it? And all these bodybuilders, they're, all, they're looking for protein. We can sell it to them. Uh, we need a USP. Well, it goes through the stomach wall pretty quickly. So that's your USP. You've got to get it down your throat immediately after a workout. And that's where whey protein came into fashion. They told people that they have to get protein down the neck immediately after a workout. You don't. Firstly, your, your blood's full of adrenaline. If you've been working out intensively, your blood's full of adrenaline. You don't digest anything after a workout. Your body should be exhausted. It takes a lot of energy to digest. You're not going to digest and synthesize protein because your body's exhausted. It doesn't want bloody food immediately after a workout, you're not protein deficient after a workout. Yeah. Why would you be protein deficient? You've been using glycogen to work out. You haven't been using protein. But anyway, so whey protein, I did a talk for Veganuary at the, the launch in 2017. And um, you, can, you can evaluate certain foods as, as regards to an amino acid score. That is the quality of protein. Protein is 21 amino acids. Yeah. And 
certain foods are given protein, uh, sorry, amino acid scores, which is the quality of protein. Whey protein is 105 amino acid score. 100 is all right. Whey protein is 105. Potato, 108. <laughs> Potato's got better protein in it than whey. Okay, so the quality of the protein that's in it. Mm. Okay, but how much protein is in a single potato, though? No, I'm talking about the quality. Of right, stuff. okay. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing with, with whey protein, th this is this bloody hilarious. People who eat meat think that they need meat to grow muscle, and they need dairy, they need whey protein to grow muscle. Most meat, 98, 99% of meat comes from female animals. Okay. Okay. Full of estrogen. The estrogen balance in a female animal is pretty high. You, people who are eating meat are taking on board estrogen. Yeah. Now, if you're trying to build muscle, the last thing you want is more estrogen. But when you're eating meat, you're taking on board more estrogen. Okay. And a lot of people blame soy for having a high... <laughs> it's, a, it's a plant. It's got phytoestrogen. Yeah. It's, it's what they call an adaptogen. Exactly, yeah. The... The phytoestrogen in soybeans will block the receptor, the estrogen receptor. It's not, it's not a hormone, hormonal right. estrogen, it's a phytoestrogen. So it blocks the estrogen receptor and stops hormonal estrogen getting into that receptor. So that's the opposite effect. Right. So we've done, we done the meat, which are mainly female animals, chicken, cows, so forth, mainly female, full of estrogen. Now... A lactating female animal has 40 times more estrogen in its body, in her body, and that's in the milk. So when you're taking on board whey protein, you're drinking liquid estrogen. That is insane. And found that the British Cancer Society, and I think it was 2002, brought out a study where they measured the average testosterone level. Now, testosterone is a manly hormone. Yeah. Everybody's got it, male and female, different ratios. But the bigger your ratio of testosterone to estrogen, the more muscle you're going to have, and the leaner you're going to be, the less fat you're going to be. Right. They measured testosterone levels in meat eaters and vegetarians. Vegetarians have got 6% higher testosterone levels than meat eaters. Then they measured it in vegans, the average male vegan. Now, you wouldn't expect a vegan to have a higher testosterone level, 6% higher than a, a meat eater, would you? No, no, that goes against everything we've no, been taught. It's 16% higher. 16? 16% higher. Why? Unbelievable. How? Because we're not taking on board estrogen. Okay, so the estrogen is, count is countering the testosterone in our body. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, right. of course. 16% higher testosterone levels. I mean, if yeah. you're into hormones, the endogenous system, that's bloody extraordinary. And then you think it's crazy that there are so few men that are vegan then, because it, it's that manly yeah. thing to be yeah, full well, of testosterone. The that's yeah. the con that they're continuing. It's insane but to think But the truth's that. coming out. Yeah. But you won't hear anything about that study. No. Because the meat and dairy is... Where, don't want where you can to I know. find that study? I want to get it up on... Uh... If, if you Google the British Cancer Society study, right. I think it was 2002, testosterone levels. All right, I'll check that out and I'll definitely uh, link that into it. I think it was a 2002 here. study and they buried yeah. that. That has been buried and they've not yeah, done course, it that's again. that's the worst possible but thing. If you're into the endogenous system, 16% higher testosterone means you've more confidence, you sleep better, you're less fat, you've got more muscle, you've got better physique, you're stronger. Um, it's, it's bloody extraordinary. Yeah. People should be told this in school. That are you going to carry on eating meat and dairy? Your estrogen levels are going to be through the roof. Yeah. Which means you're going to be lethargic, you're going to be overweight, you're going to really want, you're not going to be that confident. But if you look at schools today, I mean, we don't teach nutrition, and even the nutrition no. they teach you has nothing to do with your no. health. They don't teach people how to manage their money. So no. people leave school and everyone gets straight into debt. Yeah. They're unhealthy, and we're just set up to fail, basically, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, you, you taught a lot of stuff that's completely useless yeah. to you in later life. Um, 
but but the testosterone thing, absolutely astonishing. So you've got all these kids that again part of this talk I did was the Home Office did a survey, and I think they do this survey every year, and I think it was for 2017. They found a quarter of a million 16 to 24 year olds take testosterone injections. A quarter of a million admit to it. That's in Britain. That's insane. So essentially they're, they're injecting testosterone, then they're going to eat, eat a burger and putting estrogen into the body, which counteracts the testosterone. So they're having to take testosterone because the estrogen levels are so high. Again, Google this, there's something called estrogen dominance and it's rife in the Western world. Yeah. Estrogen dominance. Blokes' fertility have just dropped 50% since the war. Yeah, and they, they're wondering, oh, is it something to do with xenoestrogens? That's in that's plastics. been blamed on a lot of things, though. It's yeah, been blamed on mobile won't phones. Blame it on me. It's been it... blamed on pornography. Yeah. It's been blamed on yeah. I mean, have if... a look, Occam's razor. You you're eating estrogen. You're eating female animals. Yeah. You, you're eating female animals, which are lactating. You're taking on board lots of estrogen. Well, not you and not me, Thank God. but yeah. the average bloke is. And his fertility levels have dropped through the bloody floor. Yeah. And again, you just look at a quarter of a million kids having to take testosterone and try to build muscle. And it, you have a look at most gyms, it isn't working. No, no, the it's reason not. Or you'll see people with massive biceps yeah, and that's it. Really, they're yeah. eating meat and dairy, which yeah. is full of estrogen. Yeah. Have a look around the world at all the mammals, the biggest, strongest mammals... Gorilla, elephant, rhino, hippo, giraffe, horse, elk, moose, bison. They're all herbivores. Yeah. They don't eat meat. Go back to prehistoric times, big dinosaurs. All the big dinosaurs were herbivorous. They didn't eat meat. There's one called the Titanosaurus, Titanus. South American. Sounds dramatic. 100 tons. It's a herbivore. 100 tons. I'll have to see if I can get a picture of one of them up. So that all the big, strong land, land animals, yeah. mammals, or, or, or kind of any, any type of animal, is a herbivore. It's not a carnivore. Yeah. And yet, in humans, they, they, they're trying to convince us that you've got to eat meat to be big and strong. Yeah, in clearly, nature, it's no. the opposite. Yeah. yeah. I mean, clearly you're, you're extremely compassionate towards animals, and that's... Mm. Obviously, people are kind of blinded by the fitness aspect when it comes to you because mm. you are very fit. But what's your favourite animal? I'm trying to give them any, any reason because I know a lot of people will not go yeah. vegan because they're worried that they're going to lose any muscle tissue they've got. Yeah. Favourite animal? It's a dog. I love dogs. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know they're, they're carnivorous, but they're obligate carnivores. Well, that's debatable now. Yeah, yeah. I did an episode a couple of weeks ago about uh, vegan pet food, and mm. dogs can thrive on a, a vegan diet if right. they get the right nutrients and yeah. things like that. Well, but the worst thing is what's actually in pet food. Mm. The pet food that we feed them now, you've got, for example, euthanized cats and dogs, you've got uh, dead zoo animals, the, the meat sources... And that's what I was discussing in this episode, is that first, before you judge a vegan dog diet, look at what you're feeding your dog yeah, right absolutely. now. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we got into. Yeah. But anyway, to wrap this up, I wanted to say to you, so if there are any non-vegans, which generally there are, and they've stuck around for this quite long episode, actually, mm. and you could talk directly to them, what would you like to say to them? Well, I'm not criticising. Um, you were brought up that way. And I, I can completely understand that you're emotion, you become emotionally attached, attached to the way that you eat. But just try it. Goodness, do, do a little bit of research. It's your body. Do it, do it for whatever reasons you want. I mean, for health reasons, for the animals. But just try it. Yeah. And you'll find that it's so much better for you, so much better for the animals, and so much better for the planet, which means that your children you're doing something for your children and their, their children, your grandchildren. Yeah. That's a very powerful approach because when people aren't vegan, I'm like, do you have children? And what mm. earth do you want to leave behind for them? What planet are we leaving yeah. behind? Yeah. And how can you reduce the impact you have? Uh, I, think it's, um, I think it's American Indian saying that you don't own this planet. You're just keeping it for your children. Well, 
on that fine note, John, yeah. thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Pleasure. Thanks to Anytime Fitness for allowing us to record in their gym. And um, we'll be in touch and tune in next week for another episode. Thanks. Thank you.